Stitch Cuties, welcome to the video tutorial for making this super cute pin cushion using your embroidery machine. So the embroidery machine is gonna do our applique for us. It's gonna be great. So I'm also in this first video for the welcome kit, gonna give you an overview of tools I like to have around my workspace. So I always like to have a steady buddy right in front of my embroidery machine. I like to have my little Alex Anderson tool. Sometimes I use this just to like hold a piece in place or nudge it where I want it to go. And then I always use sulky 40 weight thread in the needle of my machine. And I pair it with the standard white pre-round bobbin, um, typically a 90 weight um, pre-round bobbin. These are beautiful colors for the um, Happy Place quilt. So fun. It's all the colors you need. You will also need a white thread just for your placement lines throughout. And then I always use a size 7511 needle in my embroidery machine with this rayon thread. And it just runs beautifully i love it and then let's talk about oh i like to have a little iron right now by my embroidery machine i'm using this little cricut little mini press but i also love the new Alisso m3 pros that's a great um iron to have basically you just want to have kind of a smaller iron that fits easily inside your embroidery machine hoop i love my karen k buckley scissors this is a size medium. It's my personal favorite size. It's great for trimming threads. It's great for snipping some of your applique pieces. And it's sharp all the way to the very tip and they're serrated. They're great. So when you open your little welcome kit, remember this is your little freebie, just a little something to practice using our embroidery files with. And then you have something cute to put by your machine all year as you make your other blocks. And so we send this to you before you get your first block. Remember your blocks renew on the 15th of every month. So no matter when you sign up, this is the first thing that is sent to you. All your other blocks are gonna be the full blocks and they're gonna be in a cute little box and all that good stuff. So in your pattern, I always encourage you to read your pattern right away when you get your project. So of course, we remind you it's a welcome. We give you a little meet the artist. So Julie is the one who designed the quilt in conjunction with our friend Amy of Amy Brocken Designs. It's her cute line art that she uses when she's designing a cross stitch pattern. And then Julie adapts it into the sewing machine applique and embroidery machine applique that you know from the quilt. And then first up, we have our fabric quilt, fabric prep, excuse me. And we are going to, for the background fabric, we don't do anything except give it a nice press. Our backing fabric, we're gonna trim it when it's time to assemble. And then our binding fabric, I'll put a link to a binding tutorial. It's very easy to prep and do your binding. So we're going to follow our embroidery machine applique instructions. I always read through them before I begin. And what I do is organize my applique pieces, which I'll show you how to do in one moment. And I organize my threads. So I put my thread off to the side in what I call order of appearance, how it's gonna appear in my file. So first up, after I use white, of course, would be my 1812, then my 1045, then my 1039. So that's what I do. Outside of the embroidery machine, you'll then easily assemble your little pin cushion, stuff it, sew it closed, and then put your binding on. Again, I'll share a tutorial link about the binding. Super easy, we did this, oh, don't look at the heart. <laughs> Um, we did this by attaching it with the machine. You can also do hand binding on the back side. The heart is because when mom did this sample, she was going to have us cut the back, stuff it, put the heart on. I find that to be less fun to do, and I'm sure a lot of you do too. It's much easier to just sew the actual project closed after you stuff it and then put the binding on. So yeah, don't look at that. And then in the back of the pattern, we also do a reminder that when it comes to that large block on the bottom right of the quilt, the home is my happy place block, you're gonna use your sewing machine for that. And then after that, a reminder that you're gonna get a finishing kit for your 14th box. When it comes time to do that sewing machine applique for block 13, we have stitch tips for you. And then of course, we'll have a tutorial. It's very, very simple to do. And these are Julie's tips for picking a favorite stitch and how to get your technique just right. So super helpful little pattern. And then let's get our pieces ready. So you have a full size placement guide. Your placement guide and your patterns every month are gonna be on a much larger piece of paper. They're on 11 by 17. This is on just a regular eight and a half by 11 paper. So you have your placement guide, which you're not gonna need to use because your embroidery machine is gonna stitch that in place for you. But we wanna number our pieces. And how I number the pieces is I simply open them up and I put them on top of the reverse pieces, that way the white is up and I can write on it. That will make sense in a moment. So let's organize our pieces. You'll have a couple pieces that are within a larger square 
And the reason we do that is so the paper backing doesn't come off. It keeps it a little tidy in your kit. So we're gonna simply take our scissors and snip the piece free. That's it. Takes like two seconds to do. You just find the little bitty piece of fabric, boop, snip, and now all your pieces are ready to go. So I take a Sharpie, a Pigma pen, a pencil, whatever it is you have handy, and we're simply gonna lay our pieces where they are doot, 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 fitting right in. So there we go. Oop. If I can pick it up, there we go. And this. So now I'm just gonna write the numbers on it. So we have number five, we have number one, we have number two, and a tip on this one, I have it where it's right side up. I always put your piece where it is facing up. So I'm gonna draw an arrow. That way when I'm going to put this in my hoop, I know that this is the top of my tree. It's gonna make it a lot easier instead of having to turn that around. Then we have piece number seven, piece number six, piece number four, and then our door right here is number three. So let's take a look at how we're gonna put them. I organize them now into order of how I'm gonna iron them on. So first up, we're gonna put pieces one through four. So I'm gonna pick that up, piece number one, piece number two, piece number three, piece number four. So these are gonna be the first pieces that I iron on. Then the next pieces I'm gonna iron on are gonna be five and six. And then the last step will simply be to iron on the heart. There we go, so easy. So now, You'll load your file into your embroidery machine and you're gonna load a white thread and you're gonna prompt your machine to do the first stitch, which I have done. Now for all of your blocks one through 12, you're gonna use an eight by 12 hoop. For this, because it's a little pin cushion, you can get away with an eight inch squared hoop. This is, I believe five and a half inches. So any hoop that is larger than five and a half will accommodate this. So for me, my next hoop would be the eight by eight squared hoop. Again, for the rest of your blocks, you have to have that eight by 12 hoop. So we have a, rec or, sorry, a square drawn and we are simply gonna put our background fabric in place. I'm gonna press it. I recommend doing like a little bit of starch, but I'm not doing that in the tutorial. Sorry, y'all. There we go. And you just wanna make sure that you're covering that whole square. You have more than enough fabric. We're gonna trim it at the end and you can use little sew tights to hold this in place. You wanna make sure you position them out on the edge of the fabric so that you know it's not where your machine is gonna stitch. It's gonna stitch right over that same line. You can also use another thing I like to use is 3M transport tape. It comes off really easy is why I like it. It's basically medical tape. You can order it on Amazon. It's called transport tape by 3M. Or you can use the cool sew tights. I've had fun with the sew tights lately. It's like a fun toy. There we go. So just right on the edge, it's holding my fabric in place. We're going to keep the white thread on our machine. And what's going to stitch next will be an outline that holds us in place and ultimately serves as a trim guide. And it's going to give us our outline of the first four applique pieces we'll iron on. Okay, so we have our first round of applique outlines. I know it's a little hard probably to see my white thread, but you'll be able to see yours just fine. And we're going to simply order our iron on in numerical order. So pieces one, two, three, and four. It's very important to always follow the numerical order as listed in your pattern, because sometimes there are pieces that over and underlap each other. For example, on this one there are. So just give a little press. And your pieces are gonna be perfect fits. I'm gonna take off my sew tights before I forget as well, because you don't need that anymore, because remember your fabric is now stitched in place nicely, and they simply just slide right off and go back together. Now we're gonna put piece number two in place. Remember we drew that arrow. So I'm just gonna simply flip it over, keep that arrow facing up, peel my backing off and ta-da! My tree goes right in place without having to like turn it around and figure out which way is up. Now with a piece that has a lot of little loopies like this, just make sure you're ironing it centered right in that line. And once you feel good, you give it a press. They're always gonna be a perfect fit if it's not a perfect fit, it means you don't have it in place, right? There we go. Now we're gonna do piece number three, which is our door. I'm sorry, it's not our door, it's the actual house. The door comes later on the next step. 
And again, perfect fit. And you just press it for a few seconds. So easy. The fusible that's on the back of all of your pieces is Sulky Perfect Fusible Web. It is great for applique. I love it. So lightweight, doesn't add any bulk to your project. So now those pieces are ironed on. This is what your hoop should look like. You're starting to kind of build a house, right? So we're gonna put this back on, still with white thread, and get our next round of applique outlines. Okay, so now you have your two outlines. You have your roof number five, and you have your door number six. So simply take your roof and put it in place. And again, just make sure you have those points, just so. There you go, like that, looks good. And press. And now we put our door. Isn't this the cutest fabric? I love that. It's adorable. So all the fabrics in this quilt, it's a mixture of Lori Holt fabrics and then different basics from Riley Blake, like the dapple dot, the paparazzi dot, um, I think daisy dot, dapple dot, something. Such cute fabrics, I just love it. So now these are ironed on. We have one more applique outline to stitch with the next step. Okay, so it's time to iron on that very last applique piece, number seven, which is our heart. And we will put it right in place. There we go. Looking good. And press. So now for the next three steps, I'm going to take my hoop on and off the machine so we can talk about the thread colors. However, for you, you don't need to take your hoop back off of your machine until the very end when you're ready to move on to assembly. So first up, we're going to change our thread to 1812. Now your machine is going to say 1545, but I do mean 1812 wildflowers. Um, simply a thing so that the number shows up on all of the machines across the board. So 1812 wildflower and what's going to stitch are pieces one and two. So our entire tree will be buttonhole stitched. Okay, so our purple is stitched, our wildflower. Look at that. So the tree and the tree trunk are stitched. Looks beautiful. You'll notice that the buttonhole stitch does not go across the bottom. That's because this is in the seam allowance. It doesn't need to be stitched. It's going to be this bottom quarter inch will not have um, visibility in your project. So we just go to the end of it. We don't do across the bottom. So now we're going to change our thread to 1045. This is the light teal and what's going to stitch is a really fun contrasting color on your house, your roof, and your little chimney. It's going to be adorable. Look at your little house. It looks so good stitched. It's so fun to watch everything be stitched because everything kind of comes to life. It like starts popping. It's really fun. So now we're doing our very last thread color change and that's the 1039 red. And of course our door and our heart will be stitched. And ta-da, everything is stitched. So it looks so cute. So now it is time for you to take this out of the hoop, which you'll do every month when you're done with your block. You will use this guide that is stitched as a trim guide, but you still wanna use your ruler to measure as instructed in the pattern. And you do wanna pull out all of your stabilizer. So I pull out the bulk of it and then to get it out of the inside, I usually sit down and watch TV and just pull the little pieces out. It's very easy to do. It is so cute. So now you'll go to your pattern and follow your assembly instructions. And it's as simple basically as what you're doing. Sorry, this is driving me nuts curling up on me. Let me hide it behind me. There we go. Now we can see it. So simply the basics of what you're gonna do is take your background fabric once, I mean, you're following the instructions. I'm giving loose instructions. This will be trimmed to the right size. You'll put them right sides together, doot, 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 so around almost all the way, but leave an opening here. You're gonna turn it, stuff it, then sew that closed, and then you'll prepare your binding and bind it. And again, I'll put a link to the binding tutorial for you. It's very simple to do. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. And again, this is a super fun little practice project for you that you can have by your sewing machine throughout the project as you make your happy place block of the month. If you're watching this video and you're not a member, I would love for you to join. And if you are a member, invite some friends to join you too because it's so much fun to stitch along every month. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and happy stitching.